Hi, this is Chris Hoy. Thank you for joining me on Create with Chris. Door hangers continue to be at the top of the list for popular home decor projects. And I have been having so much fun painting these new multi-piece welcome signs. Today, I will be sharing how to create this patriotic salute to Sam using simple strokes and stenciling to make it look amazing. So even though it may look complicated, it's a quick and easy project that anyone can create. So let's get started on this fun afternoon project. I just want to slide the all the pieces to the side and I'm top coating everything with multi-purpose sealer and giving it a quick sand. This will ensure the paint will stick and it will provide a smooth surface. On this round, I am applying a base coat of winter blue using the three quarter inch oval round. I'm just kind of slip slapping it on. I want it to cover, but this is the first coat. So I'm just putting it on loosely. I have the paint thin, so it's not a difficult application. It should go on nice and smooth. If it's not gliding on well, add a little more moisture to your brush and it will be amazing what a difference that will make. I am picking up a little bit of uniform blue and it's very, very thin. Just slip slapping it around the outer edge. I want it to be darker, kind of blending into light towards the middle. Once I get a, a bit around the outer edge, I just go back with a clean brush and blend it toward the center. My center was a little thin. I picked up some more winter blue. Don't be afraid to go back and forth until it's nice and blended. I don't want it solid. I like that um, almost a, a bit of movement in the background. Now that that's dry, I'm going back with a second coat of the uniform blue just to strengthen that outer edge. It almost creates a natural soft frame darker on the outside, lighter towards the center. Using a mostly clean brush just to blend those light to dark very softly together. And just keep going over it until it is nice and smooth. It's a beautiful way to create a background. I have positioned the Twinkle Star stencil on the surface and secure it with painter's tape want to load my brush with Snow White paint, wipe it off over a paper towel to remove the excess paint, and then gently swirl the brush to create just a soft coverage of the white paint on the stencil. If you've not seen my video on how to stencil perfectly, be sure to check it out on my channel, Create with Chris. This is going to take two light coats of Snow White paint to achieve perfect stenciling. Make sure to always wipe the brush off each and every time before, after reloading before you stencil. Two light coats are always better than one heavy coverage. And this is a game of patience and it's not hard. It's when you get impatient and apply too much paint that sometimes the stenciling becomes a little bit imperfect and you lose those clean, crisp edges. Be a peeker. Look underneath the stencil to see what's going on. Make sure when you put your stencil down, you use a couple pieces of painter's tape to make sure that the stencil does not shift around. And I will just repeat this to cover the entire background.
I wanted to add a little more design to the back, so I decided to add a little splattering of Snow White, and I'm using the splatter brush to flick on little sprinkles all over the entire background, and I was pretty heavy-handed with this. I thought it would give a lot more interest if there were a lot more stars. On to the individual pieces, and I did divide these up by color family, so I could paint all the white pieces at the same time, and all of the red, etc. I tried using the sponge bouncer, and I thought that would be super easy, but I did not like the way that it turned out. It left a very, like a bumpy texture um, to the surface, so I did the white like that, and then I switched over Brushes are just easier to use, and I think they give a much better, smoother result. Now be careful when you lay these pieces out that you don't accidentally turn any of them upside down because it's very important for them to fit together correctly. Um, they need to be painted with the right side up. Now I am painting the red stripes, but I want them to really glow, and problem with red, it's it's not a very opaque color, which means that to get a nice solid coverage, you have to put several coats, which in turn means that the red's going to be super dark. However, if you put a, a more a brighter, um, more uh, colorful background underneath, that red's going to glow and you're only going to need a couple coats. So I did base coat all the red pieces with melon. I'm using my half inch awesome angle to uh, apply a base coat. Normally you need, you know, two or three coats because I'm putting this on. Pay attention to how you apply it, nice and smooth and even. Make sure you use a large enough brush that it will be easy to cover quickly. Covering it more quickly also means you'll have less brush strokes and it's just going to be a little bit smoother. I did drop down to my number five radical round to do the lettering. Pay attention that you don't get paint down the side edges. It's not a big deal, but if you have to go back and clean up the side edges, um, it takes a little bit more time. If you leave it with the paint on it, it just looks a little bit messy. Remember if the paint does not flow smoothly off of your brush. Just add a little bit of water to the uh, brush. You don't want it soupy, but it needs to really flow. This is the nose, and I am painting it warm beige, and it's going to take a couple coats. Most of these will take several coats. Just make sure that, that each coat is completely dry before the next coat is applied. The hat band was uniform blue. When painting separate pieces, it's always a good idea to pay attention to which way your brush strokes are going. Brushing the paint from the center towards the outer edge will help eliminate any paint from running down the side edges. Now to paint the beard and the mustache, and you can notice I'm pushing the paint towards the outer edge. I am base coating it with slate gray and using my three quarter inch oval wash. And even though these pieces are going to be covered with a lot of white for the beard, I'm still applying the paint pretty much the direction that the beard is flowing. That way, if there are any brush strokes that are visible, they will just look like darker, deeper hairlines. Second coat on the nose, again, working from the center out toward the edges, it almost guarantees you're going to have perfect paint-free side edges. Instead of waiting for each layer to dry, I usually base coat all of the white and then all of the melon and let each one dry and then I can go back and I'm not sitting there waiting for each application dry before I put the next layer on. So that's just kind of a personal preference. Right now I am top coating the red with, or yeah, the red striped areas with tomato red. And if you have trouble with little pieces, just take a painter's tape 
and roll it up and stick it um, on your surface and then put the pieces on there. It keeps them from moving around. It's just a lot less frustrating. Eliminates any fingerprints on um, your pieces as well because they can be pretty, uh, pretty feisty. And just adding, it just makes it super easy to paint those when they're not going to walk around on, on you. Adding a second uh, layer of Snow White. And white is another uh, color that takes two, maybe even three applications to get a nice coverage. You'll be able to tell. If you can still see brush strokes, then just, you know, pop another layer on there. I want to add a little dimension to the nose, so I'm floating some dried clay across the bottom and creating a shadow effect across the top. I will add a little bit of thinned Snow White just to make it look a little more round. Using my half inch awesome angle to float that on there. And it looks a little bit bright with one when it's wet, but as it dries it tones down quite a bit. So to enhance that highlight a little bit more, I've loaded my Epic Script Liner with Snow White. Just pull a nice strong comma stroke across there. Now to create the hairs on the beard, I'm using my number five radical round and I have thinned my Snow White down enough so I can do nice long fluid strokes. So if you're not getting a nice long stroke, add a little more water to your brush to make sure that that paint just flows on nice and evenly. Now, even though it looks like it's solid white with those single strokes on there, as they dry, it's going to create that many layers of hairs and that really nice fluffy mustache look that we're going for. Always make sure you follow the contour of the mustache. So there's a particular place in the middle that it'll go from swooping up to kind of sort of straight across to swooping down. On the beard, I did draw some white chalk pencil lines on there just to make sure I know what direction because they kind of curve out on the edges and they kind of curve um, out from each side towards the middle. And I didn't want to lose that curve. So I just kind of sketched on I love using a white chalk pencil. It's a great tool to add trace lines. Um, it removes super easily and it just kind of helps keep you on track. And make sure that the ones at the bottom, you don't start. I'm, I'm going towards the bottom so that I don't get that paint dripping down over the edge. And then I'm going to pull it from the top down. There it goes, and that is the bottom edge. Not too particular. This is the first coat of several that I'm going to be doing to create the look of the beard. We really haven't spent much time on anything, just base coating up to this point. So take your time and add those multiple layers of hairs on that beard so that you get a real nice fluffy look. And I did do one side of the beard, the top side. Now I'm working on the bottom side. Make sure that your strokes blend in the middle so you don't have a start and a stop. Floating some winter blue across the top of the brim. And then I will darken the bottom edge with a little bit of paints gray. I made a mistake on the stars. I shaded them before I put them in the hat band and I shaded them incorrectly. So I'm going to show you later on what I did to correct that. But I would suggest that you kind of hold off on shading the stars until you get them in the correct place. Now I did paint the hat band or the brim with tomato red and then I shade a little bit of deep burgundy across the bottom shading a little bit of uniform blue across the bottom of the uh, white stripes and that's what I put on the stars as well. So you can see when I put the stars in the hat band I had a kind of a little bit of problem and the, the shading didn't match up so I just because the hat bands uniform blue and the shadings uniform blue 
it's easier, much, much easier to shade them in the hat band. Now I took the spectacular stencil brush that I stenciled the star background with. It has Snow White on it. Just dry brushing a highlight down the red stripe. Super easy. Trying to get everything in place. I want to add some shading around the beard and the mustache. And I, I thought this was the easiest way. So I took my brush and I floated Payne's Gray around the nose. And then I just stayed on the chisel edge and pulled it down into the mustache. And you can see how that creates that shading. Nothing is glued, it's just loose. But I float it around smoothly. Then I go on the chisel edge and just pull it down, pull it down, pull it down. It's a beautiful way to add shading. I want to shade the bottom edge as well. I'll do the same thing underneath the mustache. Float it in there and then pull it down, pull it down, pull it down just creates that shading beautifully. And then I don't have to worry about getting it in the correct place. Now that I have it shaded, I am going to go back and brighten it up. I don't want to blue mustache and beard. So I wanted to add more detail. So I'm using my Epic Script Liner and I'm putting in tiny, tiny little strokes of Snow White. Make sure your paint is fluid the Epic Script Liner is longer than a liner, but it's a little bit shorter than a script, so you have a lot of control. I can load it and paint a long, long way before I have to reload. If you have problems with this, you don't have enough water in your brush. And you can see how the right side is so much brighter, and I want it to look fluffy and full and just soft. And so just take time and just put those little lines in there. You should be able to go the length of the mustache without having to reload. If not, you're not using enough moisture in your brush. And just keep going over it and over it. And even later on, I'll add some more because as it dries, it just gets a little bit lighter and I want this to be super white and bright, red, white, and blue. Now if I go over my shading too much and it disappears, I can always go back and add a little bit more. But believe me, this little bit of touch up on the, the beard and the mustache is not going to diminish that. Right now it's way too strong. But can you see how much easier it was to place the mustache and do the shading than it would be to try to make everything fit perfectly. To me that just makes more sense. And I'm pulling those hairs up, you know, up to that shaded line because I don't want to have a stop and a start. And some of those hairs won't be as shaded as others. So, you know, just go ahead and really keep that, the, the bright areas bright, but don't, don't let the dark be super dark. You can pull some strokes up through the, there and it just makes that beard look a little bit softer. And I do spend quite a bit of time doing this. You know, there's some areas you don't need to spend a lot of time, but other areas, it's worth it. Shading Payne's Gray across the bottom of the hat band. I did pop the stars out. Don't forget to do that. And then I'm going to brighten the top with a little bit of winter blue. And the shading is what really, really makes it. My shaded stars just need a little bit more touch up. They were, because I put the shading on in the wrong places, I went back with some more Snow White to brighten the top parts up. So pay attention to what you're doing, and it saves a little bit of work in the long run towards the end. So now all my pieces are finished, just need to let them dry. I am going back now that my beard is finished. I'm floating Snow White, just strong Snow White across the bottom. Same thing on the mustache. I want that to be really bright. Floating is thinned paint, so you're still going to see all those beautiful layers underneath. But I want, you can see how much brighter it becomes with that floating on there. And this also softens it. I'm not losing all those little hairlines 
just softening them. Let it dry, go back and look at it, and uh, add more as needed. Payne's Gray in the darker shading, we did uh, deep burgundy, and then we deepen it with a little bit of Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is kind of the connecting thread. Just a touch on the white stripes, don't get too much. Wanted to add a little more design to the hat band, and I started to use the uh, Uniball white marker, but my paint wasn't dry, so I went back to my Epic Script Liner in Snow White, but the Uniball gel pen is great for that. And I'm doing a little bit of line work on the letters as well. On the brim, I wanted to put dip dots, so I used my stencil as a template because I am not good at putting perfect dots on, but I'm using my stylus to dip dot over top the stencil design because I wanted those dots to be super white and bright. And so I can go back over them now that I know exactly where my dip dots need to be placed. I can go back with my stencil and it just is perfect. Now there were a couple places where the dots were off the edge, so I just went back and, and stuck some in there just because it looked better. It's not exactly. I had some double, some that I wanted to get rid of. I used my uh, Mono Zero eraser and water it removes dry paint. So that's my very best friend to um, remove any errors. Going around the outer edge again to darken it with Payne's Gray and my awesome half inch angle just helps to frame it in, makes it that much richer and really kind of balances out that blue on the hat band. I think that's just the perfect touch. We use Payne's Gray as shading everywhere and to put it around the outer edge. Now my pieces are still not glued yet, so I can move them around as needed to get that shading in there. Now the hat pieces can be pushed together tightly or spread apart. And I played with both of them, and I did leave a little bit of a gap in between. I thought that turned out really well, and I like that final look. I varnished all of the pieces with the Ultramat varnish and then glued them in place. I like using Quick Grip Adhesive. Everything I use for this project is listed in the links below. I love how this turned out, and I think you will too. I would love to hear from you, so let me know if you have any comments or questions. If you like what you see, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. That helps me out and you won't miss out on upcoming videos. I hope you learned a few new tips, tricks, and techniques to make your painting life a little bit easier and a lot more fun. Thank you for joining me and I look forward to our next painting adventure together.